Well, hello there, motherfuckers, and it is time for your Force Awakens review. Yes, that's right. I saw the Force Awakens 11.15 showing, and there's going to be a shitload of fucking spoilers in this one. A ton of fucking spoilers, um, you know, from, from top to bottom. So if you didn't see the movie yet, or, you know, you know, if you don't, um, you know, if you're really concerned about fucking spoilers, turn this shit off right now. Because I'm going to spoil the fuck out of this video. It's in the title. So I don't want, you know, anybody trying to do any flagging or any type of fucking complaining on this video. Because your asses have been fucking warned that I am going to fucking spoil these videos. I mean, I'm going to spoil this fucking movie in this video. Uh, uh, this movie, in my opinion, was fucking incredible. Um, J.J. Abrams, this is, this universe now belongs to him. From the opening scene to the last scene, this movie was almost, it was nearly perfect. It was nearly fucking perfect. This movie had everything. New characters, returning characters, uh, shocking events. Uh, this is just everything you could possibly want in this movie. Uh, uh, amazing cinematography. Iconic fucking scenes. You know, I'm sorry, but anybody who didn't enjoy this movie, you know, okay, maybe you don't enjoy stars, but you just don't enjoy film, Okay. Because even somebody who doesn't really care for the Star Wars universe, if they watch this movie from top to bottom and they're not impressed with the way this movie is shot and presented, hey, what can I tell you? You just, you hate film. You dislike everything about film because everything about this movie just, it, it screams beauty. It is a thing of beauty, not just for Star Wars fans, but visually this is fucking amazing. The right amount of CGI, the right amount of practical effects. I love that we still have some classic puppeteering, guys in suits. Yes, there's some CGI, but it's the perfect balance. It's something that I wish that was in the prequels. And this is coming from somebody that adores the prequels. I've stated this on a number of occasions. And perhaps I'll, I will make some videos. If you guys want to hear some more Star Wars talk from me, I will make a video where I defend the prequels, and I don't know if I've done that in the past, but if I have to do it again, if you guys really seriously want to hear, uh, you know, what I really think about the prequels and uh, why I like them, and you know, I'll state my case and all that, and we can have a discussion about that. But these movies, um, they feel new. They feel, you know. I, there's a lot of what was missing, like the space battles and a lot of, you know, stuff with the, uh, you know, spaceships that was missing from the prequels. Uh, and we got that in this movie. But th this movie feels very, very organic. It feels very much like this is something that came from J.J. Abrams, meaning that it's creative. And J.J. Abrams is not really copying. There's a lot of you know, classic Star Wars in this, but there's a lot of originality where you can tell that this is not just a George Lucas ripoff or, you know, something from the number of directors that, you know, worked on Star Wars films. This is, you know, this is not like an Irvin Krishner fucking ripoff or Empire Strikes Back ripoff. And I was taking a look at some of this acting. I was really closely examining it, you know, just really taking a look at like the dialogue that was being said during this movie. Um, and it felt very loose, loose meaning that it felt very rich and very original and very natural. Like this is like human beings talking and this is not necessarily things that would just be said in the fictional universe. Of course, some of the terminology being discussed and, you know, organizations and affiliations and shit like that pertains to the Star Wars universe. But the way these people talk, it really feels like they are talking to each other. You know, no longer do we have these Padme and Anakin love scenes where, you know, people who are in love wouldn't really be saying that stuff to them unless they were just fucking weird. Uh, but, you know, what's being said in this movie, the fucking lines that are being said, these, these are the things 
that um, people really say, you know, and things that Finn and Ray say in this film, they feel like they're being said by human beings and not like fucking fed into a computer. And then this is somebody who really didn't so much hate the acting in the prequel films. But, you know, I do admit, like, the love scene with Padme and Anakin scenes, you know, could have been a whole fucking lot better. There's been a lot worse acting, but like I said in previous videos, and what I will be discussing when I do, like, my prequels and my reviews and shit like that uh, about the Star Wars universe, if that's what people want, um, you know, it's everything is held to a Star Wars standard. Um, and as I said, if we look at the Star Wars films as, you know, um, compared to other films, they're superior to a lot of other films because no other movies create these worlds and characters. They can't be experienced anywhere else. They're completely original, completely unique. But I believe that with The Force Unleashed, this encompassed everything. No longer did we have the gripes that we had with the prequels. We got a little bit of, you know, stuff that was introduced in the prequels, like technology, advanced technology, you know, as far as uh, visual presentation in movies. The way how episode one uh, paved the way for new, you know, CGI technology, things that have never been seen before. Um, and, you know, the original trilogy introducing us to, you know, things that we never thought were going to be possible. Um, you know, Star Wars changed science, changed everything. And we are getting a lot of that in The Force Unleashed. We're getting, it's an all-encompassed, like, J.J. Abrams learned about Star Wars. You can tell that J.J. Abrams is a, a fan of Star Wars. And he worked extremely hard to present this movie the best way possible and to please everybody he possibly could with it. Kylo Ren is an amazing villain. I really adore, um, so we find, you know, sadly, I read a spoiler online. Somebody had posted it, some fucking jack off on my new YouTube channel. And all I could say is, fuck you, buddy. Somebody posted it on my YouTube channel about Han Solo's son, Ben, being Kylo Ren, um, and, you know, Han Solo's death, once again, don't complain about spoilers. I swear to fucking God, if you complain about spoilers in a video, there were the fucking caption with my title specifically reads, there, there's a shitload of spoilers. That's on you, pal. The scene. Now, I saw this with my friends. Um, you know, two of my friends, not really a big crowd, but one of them really fucking hated... Um, Han dying and still believes that he's alive. I believe that Han is dead. I, I think that's it for him. I think they really wanted to show that Kylo Ren was purely evil and that he was really shifting from one side to the other. You know, he, he had a lot of light in him, but I think the dark side is just so powerful. I believe they wanted to show that. The lightsaber battle in the snow. Visually, I was just in awe. It's just, it's, it's so fucking beautiful. It is fucking pretty. And I know it doesn't sound really awesome to say that, but when you take a look at just the full scope of some of these scenes, it's fucking breathtaking. And if your breath is not taken away by that scene, then I'm sorry, you hate movies. You do. Um, yeah, this, uh, this movie was just, I, I was in fucking awe. And I love the way how this film ended. It was the perfect way. I, I thought that it was going to end in the Jedi Temple on Yavin 4 with Luke. But, you know, I like that he was on the mountaintop. Very reminiscent to, like, something that a monk would be living on with, you know, lots of steps and stuff. Um, it was perfect. The Jedi beard. Picture fucking perfect movie. Uh, for, from top to bottom... Loved the characters, loved every single character, loved the humor. Everything just felt so organic, so amazing. Carrie Fisher for, you know, being on drugs for most of her fucking adult life looks not bad. She didn't age as amazingly as Harrison Ford, but, you know, then again, few actors have. I, I was just pleased. 
Um, this is just going to be a quick review for right now. I might have some more videos about The Force Unleashed when I think about it. I'm trying to take it all in. I am definitely seeing this movie for a second time. I might re-review this once I see it for a second time. But all I could say is this movie, it, it just it felt awesome. The shocking moment when Han dies, my friend didn't like it. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there probably watching this video and otherwise who hated that. But I personally, I thought it adds a lot. That really shows that this is J.J. Abrams' movie. And that, you know... And plus, Ben, I believe, was the name of Han's son in the books. So they did take that from the expanded universe. There you go. But anyway, I liked Han's death. You know, I'm not, like, you know, happy about it. But, like, what I mean is that I liked that... J.J. Abrams did something major with this series. He took the life of a character. He made it his own. And it made sense. It's not just like he killed the character off. He it, it, it made perfect sense to me, which is why I was perfectly fine with it. And I was happy to see that J.J. Abrams making Kylo Ren a vicious force. You see the tantrums, you know, every single time... You know, his minions fail him. Fucking Kylo Ren goes fucking nuts with his lightsaber. That lightsaber is fucking awesome. Um, so, yeah, I, I give this movie right now a 10 out of 10. Did not have a single fucking problem with it. It was fucking incredible. I smiled from the beginning of the movie to the, you know, to a, a, a long time ago. That text right to the end with Luke and Ray standing on the fucking mountaintop. Fucking incredible movie, a must see. Um, you know, it's a shame that we had to wait so long to see episode eight, but I guess it's going to be well worth the wait. I will be in my 30s technically when that movie comes out. I'm guessing it's coming in like 2018, probably at least three years. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. So, yeah, this was fucking incredible.